Happy Wednesday, Floss Tube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name's Caroline. Welcome back to what is going to be a very short little video. But uh, I, it's today's the day we start pulling the winners for the giveaways from last week. Um, and I, I have a few minutes. Everybody's left the cottage. They're all down at the dock. Uh, John is working on cleaning up. Well. It, it's a huge job. It's a, it's, this has taken a couple of days um, dismantling the beaver lodge that the beavers have been very busily building probably for the last six weeks, eight weeks, um, that we might, I don't, it couldn't have been, no, it couldn't have been that long because John was up here not that long ago. It's over on my father-in-law's dock, so it's not actually on, on our side, but he was using, anyways, uh, I've gotten off topic here. Needless to say, the cottage is quiet, so I had a few minutes to talk to you. I drew the winner for day one's giveaway, which was the Blackbird uh, Tweet Tweet project bag set, the large size project bag set, along with the Modern Folk Embroidery Distal Fink Heart Chart, and the Roxy Floss Purples, uh, the same colors that I used to stitch mine. I will try to take a screen cap of my stitching i left it at at home at the workshop so i didn't bring it with me today but i've drawn the winner congratulations sylvie thibodeau you are the lucky winner of the day one prize from last week congratulations um i believe i have your address because you um, were a participant of stitch north at stitch north so i believe i have your address so if i don't hear back from you i'm just gonna mail you your prize um It is so hot today. I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted because um, it's it's been very hot and very still. And finally today, the the breeze has picked up just a little bit, which is also incredibly helpful out here um, because, of course, we're we're right on the 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 lake, uh, Georgian Bay, is part of Lake Huron, and uh, the water temperature is of course colder than the air. So as long if there's a, just a slight breeze. That's all we need to take the temperature down just a little bit and um, of course you know we can just go and jump in the lake at any time but uh, it's it's been very hot it's been very very hot so today the breeze is up just a little bit which has been really nice I've been doing a little bit of stitching uh, having having uh, in the in the stitching time that I've had I have been working on my modern folk embroidery when this you see and you might remember that i started my stitching with the fabric in the wrong orientation however i'm still going to have enough room at the sides and in fact i've decided what i want to do with this piece uh jacob jacob himself is coming to canada at the end of um just trying to just trying to see what mess behind me you can see i did all the dishes this morning but uh you know we're we're in a a cabin here where we don't have a lot of storage space and everything is just kind of has a home but it's it's kind of out in the open so anyways for forgive me for for whatever messes you may encounter in the next week um jacob is coming to canada i'm hosting a retreat in october uh with him and he's going to be teaching us uh how to do the hem stitch as well as uh few other various and sundry things. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to finish this piece and I'm going to, I'm going to learn to do the hem stitch and I'm going to finish this piece by using the hem stitch all the way around the outside of the border. So I'm kind of excited about that finish and then it won't really matter at all that I will only have about an inch of fabric on the edge when it's done. So there's where I've, that's what I've done over the last couple of days. I've also been working on my Nevermore piece by Leela Studios, but I'll save that to share tomorrow because I'm going to be putting a few more stitches in that today. Love it. So this is, of course, uh, needs a good iron. This is a piece of 40 count Panettone by Roxy Flosco, and I'm using the Firlanda floss, which was the floss that Carrie dyed specifically for these projects what um what jacob had in mind for them isn't it i just love it <sighs> and yes 
I forgot my silly Q-snap at home, which is, I, I tell you, it's so annoying because that is the one thing about coming up here. You have to remember it because if you don't remember it, you're gonna do without it. Uh, you can't just pop home to go and get one. And even John said, well, can, can I go and get you one at, at Walmart? Well, Walmart here in Perry Sound has, uh, I mean, they have hoops. I think they might have a, a key snap, but then I'm only here for a short time. Do I really want to purchase another hoop or cue snap when, you know, I, I'm perfectly capable to stitch the small fabric in hand. So it's not my favorite, but it is, uh, it's doable. So instead of spending the money on another cue snap, because you know, I've got like 10 of them at home. That, that's why it's so annoying that I forgot to bring one. I brought everything else with me. All my other bits and pieces. I, I always forget something. Last year, I forgot a needle. Um, you know, the year before that, I think, I, I think two years in a row, I forgot to bring scissors. And I had to use the awful, awful, you know, old kitchen kitchen scissors on uh, to get any kind of stitching done. So I remembered my scissors. I remembered my needle. I remembered everything else except for my Q-snap. So fortunately for me, the other projects that I've brought are all on scroll rods, which makes it simple. I had a question about attaching fabric to scroll rods. It's very simple. The scroll rods, the scroll rods themselves have webbing that is stapled to directly to the rod. And then you just sew your fabric, you baste it on. Um, I, I have done both. I have hand basted the fabric on and I've used my sewing machine to baste it on. So this particular project, oh, which I just love so much. Look at this. Look at this. It's so pretty. This is the EW sampler from the kitten stitcher book, Most Humble Hands. Let's put, uh, put my other project behind it so that you can see it a bit better. It's so pretty. So that's in the most humble hands book and I'm, I'm doing a Roxy Flosco conversion. But anyways, you can see, I, I chose this project to show you the basting on the scroll rods because I had some black sewing thread in my sewing machine at the time and I wasn't gonna re-thread my bobbins just to sew my thing on. So you can see what I, where I basted it on by the, by the black line. So what I do is I just pin my fabric in place, a couple of pins across the, across the rod and then I set my sewing machine to the longest stitch length possible and then I just zip it down. And if you don't have a sewing machine, um, well, I often don't have a sewing machine when I'm right beside me, when I'm excited, enthusiastic about starting a piece. I know I'm right on a floorboard that's got a huge squeak. So every time I step on it, I think, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I have hand basted many, many a project on a scroll rod and it works just as well. Just pin it in place so that it's fairly straight across your rod, um, a few pins all the way along and then just, you know, double knot your end your, of your thread and just hand baste it on. Good to go. That's all you need to do. It's easy, easy peasy. Uh, what other questions did I have? I didn't write anything down. So off the top of my head, um, Oh, oh, what kind of light? What kind of lighting do I use here at the cottage? That's a great question. I have, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll try to show it. I'll try to put in a picture here. I use a floor lamp that I bought off of Amazon. I've actually, I liked it so much that I bought two more, one for home and another one for here for the guest room um, as a light uh, to be used when we have, when we have guests staying. It's by a company called Verilux, and it's a floor frame. It's a floor lamp with a gooseneck, and it's LED, and it hardly uses any power. So I can I can stitch until the wee hours of the night, and it hardly uses any power. So I don't really have to worry about draining our batteries if I want to stitch late at night. And the light that it provides is really good. Um, I am not a stitcher who requires magnification. I know many do, and that you're looking for a light that has magnification in it, so I can't speak to that because I actually, I never use magnification. I simply take my glasses off and then 
my eyes are little magnifiers. That's just how my vision works. I'm extremely nearsighted. Uh, so Verilux is the name of the floral lamp. I bought it off Amazon and no paid promotion here. I, you know, they don't know who the heck I am. I love that light so much. I now own three of them. They're great, great lamps. Um, I did have one of the goosenecks, one of the gooseneck coverings has, um, the, the, it, it's, it's broken in that the covering itself, the plastic has come apart but it doesn't affect the way the gooseneck works and it's probably a situational thing. Like I wouldn't say that that's because of the product. I would say that that's because it's here in this location where it spends every winter frozen. <laughs> so that's, I, I, would, I would highly doubt that's a feature that I would be concerned about. And frankly, the light still works exactly the same. It's just that the covering case um, split. It broke in one spot, but it's right at the, it's right at a bend. Works just fine. Um, what else? Other than that, the questions were maybe a little bit about the wildlife that I shared at the end of the last video. And don't worry, no more pictures today. Uh, for those of you who thought the snake was really cool, I agree with you. Couldn't agree with you more. It was really super cool. And for those of you, I, I knew farewell, um, full well, that there would be lots of people who would not want to see the snake at all. And so I will always give you warning or notice before I put in anything like that. Uh, don't worry, there aren't any photos or videos of snakes today. Uh, but I did want to tell you that the very next day, that snake that came to visit us brought its mate and there were two of them <laughs> there were two of them on the deck um, so there's a bird's nest directly under the breeze room and uh there are there are baby sorry this this we have a it's a it's a pine plank floor and it does it does creak uh, there are baby birds in that nest also the squirrel that keeps getting in there is definitely the squirrel it, it's a long story and I'll save that for another day. Squirrel currently is the bane of our existence and um, we are working, John, I should say, the, it's the royal we, John is working very hard at um, correcting the situation out there with the screening in order to discourage the squirrel from from getting in. But we the, the, it's clearly made a nest inside one of the soffits that it can access through the inside of the up part of the breeze room and we just need to we need to we need to ensure that there aren't any babies in that nest before we try to dismantle it or clean it out of there and so you know it's it's kind of we we can tell that the squirrel is rather desperate to get in there so i have a funny feeling there might be babies in there now all that to say the breeze room is totally um closed off from the rest of the cottage we can choose to keep the door open and let the you know the cross current of air come through but we do actually have proper uh french doors demarcating the the breeze room from the rest of the cottage and the flooring that's out there is you know deck flooring it's an outdoor room that just happens to be um you know netted in for mosquitoes so that we can enjoy it um, being outside while we're here because the mosquitoes are are quite voracious up here so anyways not to worry we're not concerned about the snake or the snakes or the squirrels actually getting into our cabin um, we're we're pretty aware and when we're not sort of out there or in here with lots of people around and the dog around um, the the door is just kept closed so don't don't worry don't worry I'm not afraid we're not afraid though I can totally understand people who would uh, not find that overly fun or amusing. So anyways, there you go. Congratulations, Sylvie Thibodeau. Congratulations, you are the day one winner. And uh, this video is probably way longer than I thought it would be. Just me having a chat here with you. And um, yeah, but I'll be back tomorrow to let you know who's gonna win day two. So I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, I hope you've got some stitching to enjoy this evening. I am going to be working on Nevermore, as well as um, tonight. tonight's the night I'm changing over to the Friendship Sampler. So hopefully tomorrow I will have some progress to share with you. So have a great night, everybody. Happy stitching. <laughs>